It's springtime in Armenia, and the cherry blossoms have arrived around the capital city, Yerevan. And that's not all that's breaking out here. More than 120,000 Russians have come here since the war began in Ukraine, with more arriving each day. This sudden influx, however, is causing challenges for Armenians as well. Well, my fiance and I have been looking for an apartment, and the prices have gone up more than twice, and it's almost impossible to find an apartment in Yerevan. Everywhere, the prices have gone up, like, dramatically. This former Soviet satellite state is one of the few places left where Russians can travel, and up to 40 flights arrive here from Russia every day. Many of the passengers don't plan on going home anytime soon. There are Russians all over here in downtown Yerevan, and I've been talking to many of them. It seems like most of them are young professionals, IT people, things like that, people who do their work online. And that's something that you really can't do right now in Russia because of the sanctions. Also, everybody that I've spoken to has so been vehemently against this war. Like but so there's a catch. A lot of Russians they don't want to go right on now. camera and talk about it. That says a lot about how much they fear their own government, because most of them still have families back in Russia. Uh, Eventually, know, uh, we found these two young uh, Russians uh, willing to speak out on Russia. camera. No. Can you tell me why you left Russia? Yeah, because of the war and uh, the Putin dictatorship. So we decided to move, like my friends moved to Armenia and I moved to Georgia. And we probably won't come back until the government overthrown, but I won't be putting my money on it. But hopefully, someday, maybe. How do you feel about the war in Ukraine? I'll ask you. That's awful uh, because uh, this is illegal war uh, and uh, now Putin makes a lot of war crimes in Ukraine. So uh, <laughs> I'm not agree with the politics of my country. And uh, it's kind of strange feeling when uh, your country goes to war, but you want that your country lose it. Even if the war ends and like Russia loses, I don't see myself living comfortably in a country where like uh, the country leader is almost like a Hitler <laughs> and like the absolutely militaristic state of the government right now is awful. So far, Armenia has avoided taking a political stand on the war, even though most are horrified at the images coming out of Ukraine. Um, I think because um, Ukraine's government supported Azerbaijan during the war uh, in Artsakh, um, Armenians feel hurt and uh, they don't really want, they, they did not really want to support Ukraine. But after, you know, seeing what was happening in Ukraine, of course, we felt bad for the people. Um, and we are trying to be supportive and we're trying to be open not only to Russians in Armenia, but also to Ukrainians. Uh, Armenians are great with Russians. They totally understand the situation because uh, there was a war in Armenia some time ago. So they are super friendly and I like this country very much. Thousands of Ukrainian refugees have landed here as well, which makes for an interesting dynamic in the coffee shops around Yerevan, where refugees from both sides rub shoulders. Still, this Armenian pastor so says there's a bright uh, side to, to this crisis. In Armenia. They are in a desperate situation. Some of them are depressed and they don't hope they don't have hope to go back to Russia. So they are looking forward to stay here for a long time. So this is a good, good, very good opportunity for us. From Yerevan, Armenia, I'm Chuck Holton for CBN News.